presence. We thank you, Father, for the gift of this Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, for your awesome sacrifice. We thank you and honor you. We thank you this morning. Amen. If you would follow me into the Word of God as we go now to Acts chapter 2. So in Acts chapter 1, Jesus sets up the expectation of the Holy Spirit coming. Jesus gives the purpose of the Holy Spirit to be a witness so that he empowers us to be a witness for him. When we get to Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, the Holy Spirit arrives. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other language as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, filling the house. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. What a dramatic entrance of the Holy Spirit. Tell us more. Holy Spirit, speak to us now. We are listening, and it is my prayer that the word that is coming forth is relevant to each and every person here today, that this word you can see how it fits into your life. So Father God, help us open our eyes that we might see in our ears, that we might hear. We are ready for thus says the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As I get ready to talk about the expectancy of the Holy Spirit, I do want to point out some things in this scripture that further heightened the relevance and the importance of this day of Pentecost over 2,000 years ago when the first church experience this extraordinary event. When it um, talks about, um, where do I want to go? Uh, suddenly there was a sound from heaven, a mighty windstorm. As some of you might know, and I hope I'm informing others, is that the Holy Spirit is often likened to the wind. Because we can hear the wind we can, we can see the effects of the wind, but we can't actually see the wind. We see the effects of the wind. So it is with the Holy Spirit. We do not physically see him, but we can surely see the effects of the Holy Spirit and his ministry. A mighty windstorm. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire says it looked like. And when we talk about tongues and hear tongues, we know that tongue is for speech. And so it's for language. And so we can see what God is reversing here as we know that the New Testament fulfills the things done in the Old Testament. The Old Testament brings revelation. The New Testament will bring fulfillment. And so if we go back into Genesis chapter 11, we see that there was a moment in time when God confused 
people with language. So now all of these years later, the Holy Spirit shows up and now everybody can hear each other in their language. And so when he confused with language all those years ago, now God is restoring one language so everybody can be unified and everybody can hear the tongues. The other thing I want to point out, how this is a reversal of something that occurred in the Old Testament, is that when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and gave the law, 3,000 people died that day. The 3,000 people who, while he was up receiving the law, were involved in idolatry. Those 3,000 people were killed. On the day of Pentecost, if you were to read on, Peter stands up to give the message of the Holy Spirit in the birth of the church and calling people to be saved, 3,000 souls came to be saved that day. The giving of the law, 3,000 people died. The giving of the Holy Spirit to the church, 3,000 people are born again. Don't ever doubt God and his plan. God, he's amazing. He is just amazing. So today on Pentecost Sunday, 50 days after Resurrection Sunday, we come with the same type of expectancy that the Holy Spirit, as he was on that day, we won't have a Pentecost day like that again because we don't need to. He's here. He's in us. The birth of the church has happened. But we remember and should always live each and every day in expectancy that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is operating and present in our lives. So we expect from God. If I asked of you, what are you expecting from God? I, I'm sure I hear things, you know, that God is empowering me, that I'm going to be successful, I'm going to have victory in war, warfare, spiritual warfare, all of that. But now when I get to the question, what is God expecting of you? And I believe we're getting it. God expects me to love. That's why we're living in love, because God expects that of me. God expects worship. But I also come to remind you today, based on the text, that the reason why Jesus said he was pouring out the Spirit, the, Spirit, the Father was giving us the Spirit, was so that we could be empowered to be witnesses for him. That no matter where we go, everywhere we are, what we are doing, our lives are a testimony. Our lives are a witness to the goodness of God. Our lives are a witness to the saving grace of God. Our, God, our lives are a witness to what God can do and what he is doing. So when we talk about being empowered, I believe most of the time we're thinking about being empowered so we can get through our circumstances. Yeah, okay, yeah, God, God promises we'll get through them. But don't forget that the empowerment also gives you the ability and the tongue that you might be able to tell someone about Jesus Christ. I'm hoping right now that what's going through your mind, you say, oh yeah, pastor, I did that. You know, I, I testified on Monday. I was a witness on Tuesday. Oh yeah, I'm remembering I told somebody on my job on Wednesday about Jesus Christ. Our lives daily are to be a testimony and a witness to the power, to the grace, to the goodness, to the mercy of Jesus Christ. That is why Satan is so intent on getting us to stumble. That's why he's so intent, because he's trying to destroy your witness for Jesus Christ. 
It is our witness for Jesus Christ. See, you think that it's really personally about you? You really think it's about him not wanting you to become president of whatever uh, place, your place of work? You think it's really about you not being able to, to buy this big old man? You think that's what it's about? He is trying to destroy the witness that you have for Jesus Christ. If the Holy Spirit came to empower you to be a witness, the enemy comes to destroy your witness. Destroy it. But we live in expectancy. Jesus set the atmosphere for them to expect the arrival of the Holy Spirit. I want you to have each and every day an expectancy that the Holy Spirit is present with you and that the Holy Spirit will give you the ability that you need to keep keeping on. The word says that as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability to speak in a, in a language, gave them the ability to witness. So how do we keep cultivating the atmosphere for the expectancy of the Holy Spirit? I heard uh, this um, priest, um, Edwin Lewis Cole, he, he gave this, uh, this quote is attributed to him, that expectancy is the atmosphere for miracles. Expectancy is the atmosphere for miracles. If you can expect God to show up and manifest his presence, if you can expect God to be present with you, you should always be expecting miracles because we serve a miracle working God. You should always be expecting miracles. When the odds are against you, you should be in expectancy that the Holy Spirit is going to show up. When you don't know how to get out of what you are in, you should be in a place of expectancy. Holy Spirit, I'm expecting you. So we cultivate an atmosphere of expectancy. And what does this expectancy, what is it to do? Yes, we're expecting the Holy Spirit to come. And when we expect him to come, we expect him to align our lives with the will of God. That, that, that's his role. He's going to lead us into all truth. He's going to transform us. So I know we all have plans. So I know you want X, Y, or Z. And if I stand here and just say, well, the Holy Spirit is going to help you with X, Y, and Z. He's going to empower you so that that which you desire, that which you are praying for, that it will come to pass. But it wouldn't be the complete truth. Because the complete truth is he's not your genie. And so you just can't ask him for anything you, you, it can't be willy-nilly. You can't just ask him. It has to align with the will of God. Because he's come to align our lives with the will of God. So if you ask him for something that is outside of the will of God, you just might not be empowered to do it. I shared with you that time that um, someone came to me praying to God that they would get this other woman's husband. Now, I, I, it's a true story, I promise you. The same look I have on my face right now, I know is the look I had when I was sitting in that chair. And, and I'm saying, but that's not the Holy Spirit. You, 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 you want Holy Spirit to get that man from that woman and... 
God is to align our lives with the will of God. So it doesn't mean that you are going to get everything the way you want it and because you want it. He is consistently aligning us with the will of God. So I, I liken it to the, to the analogy I give to you this morning is the analogy of our cars needing alignment. I can remember getting my first car as a teenager and one day I'm driving and all of a sudden the wheel just keeps shaking and shaking. And I'm like, what is going on? So I found, found out, you know, it was a learning moment that my car needed a wheel alignment. Um, uh, uh, but if I got out the car and looked at the car, everything looked fine. The wheels looked like they were in the right place, you know, front, rear wheels, four wheels, looked like, okay, get in the car and go, because from the outside, everything looked fine. It's just when you got on the inside. So right now, everything is looking fine. You're all looking good this morning. You're looking nice. You look like you got it all together. They, okay, I, I couldn't even tell if you got something going on in your life right now. Uh, but when I got in the car and tried to drive, that's when the problem was. And so maybe inside of yourself right now, some things aren't, aren't feeling as good. You're looking good, but maybe it's not feeling good on the inside. So the only thing I'm saying is the Holy Spirit, when he comes with his power and the ministry that he gives us for life is this, that he's going to do an alignment in your heart. He's going to do an alignment in your thoughts, that you can be aligned with the will of God. And then when you are aligned with the will of God, you get to be a witness to the power of God and what the Holy Spirit will do in your life. So we cultivate this atmosphere of expectancy. I'm expecting that the Holy Spirit is gonna do some, some, something with my thoughts. I'm expecting that he's going to help me keep my heart right. I'm expecting this. It's the atmosphere. So when your life has an atmosphere that cultivates the expectancy of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it is cultivated through our prayer life, through our worship, through our fellowship, through our spiritual disciplines or rhythms. It is cultivated by us remembering what God, I only have a minute left. How am I do this in a minute? Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna go fast. I'm gonna speak fast. Okay, so we cultivate this, this, uh, this atmosphere. And so through our prayer life, because we want the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to us. We want the Holy Spirit to purge us. We want to keep our thoughts in line with God. We want to keep our mind focused on Jesus because that's where our perfect peace is. We want to cultivate this expectancy through our worship. We just experienced a, a, a moment of worship here today where we all came together to uh, uh, express our adoration of God. We've come together to express our love of God. We come to remind one another just how good God is. He helped you last week. He helped me last week. You got through. I got through. Come on, you all. Now let's just celebrate. Let's Let's celebrate because we, uh, we made it through. It's our worship. And then he, he, he comes into the worship. I know I'm on this platform I was looking at Rachel. I know I was looking at Keneal. I know I was looking at Deborah. I know I was looking at Teresa and Roland and, and uh, Alexis. I know I was looking at all of them. But I also know that the Holy Spirit was a part of it. I, I know the Holy Spirit was a part of it. So it's through our worship, it's through our fellowship. That's one reason why I love coming to church. You know, I, 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 I can't relate to people that are done with church. I love coming to church because I love the fellowship. 
And I figured out how to deal with people who want to mess up my worship. I mean, I get it. I get it. I, I, I'm telling you, always come to church. Be in the fellowship. Don't, I'm, 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 I'm aware that there are some people that, want to, that come to church and they want to upset your worship. But I figured out how to deal with that. Because if, if anybody brings me any mess, come on, let's pray. You want, you want to bring some gossip? Oh, that what you want to talk about? Oh, I think we should pray about it. Let's stop talking and let's just start praying. And then guess what? They're not coming to you anymore because their intent was not to take it to God. Their intent was just to stir some things up. But you, I'm telling you, 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 some people won't come to church because there's too much mess going on in church. But I'm telling you how to deal with it. You come with the right heart. You come wanting to praise God. You come wanting to worship God. And you come defending your, your right to worship free of any mess. Just start asking people to pray. Come on, we're going to stop all this and we're going to pray. So I cultivate, the, we cultivate the atmosphere of expectancy of the Holy Spirit with our fellowship together. We create this hunger for him, this desire for him, this thirst for righteousness. We create the atmosphere for him to come. And then we create the atmosphere through our faith. It is our faith. It's our faith. Some of you came here today because of your faith. You might have gotten up this morning, you ain't feel like coming to church. But as De uh, Deacon Andre talked about, there are just times in life you got to put your faith over your flesh. And so you get up, your faith brings you here. And then we cultivate the atmosphere of the expectancy of the move of the Holy Spirit when we just start talking about God and remembering just what he has done in our lives. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring to our remembrance the word of God, to bring to our remembrance who God is, to bring to our remembrance what God has done. I was sitting over there thinking, and I'm saying to myself, just 30 plus years ago, I remember the, the agony I was in. I remember the situation I was in. I remember feeling as though I was living hell on earth. I remember it. But here I am 35 years later, and I have a praise. I have a testimony. I can witness to you about God showing up in a midnight hour. I can witness to you that when everybody else leaves, he's still there. I got a testimony for you today. And I'm sure you do too. Because that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to remind you that same God that was there for you 35 years ago, that same God that was there for you 10 years ago, that same God that was there five years, that same God is still here. He is still here. He is still here. He is still here. I don't know what you're going through. I just got to tell you, he is still here. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. I'm, okay, you know it's been longer than a minute. Okay. Let me wrap it up. Let me wrap it up. So Pentecost was this pivotal event that propelled the church into this new era of empowerment, boldness, and fruitfulness. And that is the same thing that happens when you allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in you and through you. There's a boldness that comes up in you. There is an empowerment that is in you that you feel like, I can make it. I can get through this. I can get over this. It's being courageous enough to say, I'm standing on faith. I know you think that this isn't going to turn out for my good, but you don't understand. I'm going to be bold in my testimony and believing what God has said. 
I'm going to be courageous in believing is going to come to pass in my life. Because Holy Spirit, I am expecting you. And then when he shows up, you say, Holy Spirit, I was expecting you. Now let's go. Let's go. So here's where I want to leave you. When you create this atmosphere of expectancy of the Holy Spirit to show up, the word of God reminds us just what he will do. Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 31 says that when we are feeling weak and we need some strength, the word says, but those who wait on the Lord, those who have hope in the Lord will renew their strength. The word of God says you will soar. Can someone say I'm soaring? It says you will soar on wings like eagles. You will run and not get weary. You will walk and not faint. So the Holy Spirit will bring that scripture alive in your life. So anybody feeling weary right now, you just say, Holy Spirit, I'm expecting you. I'm expecting you because I'm about to soar on wings like eagles. The word of God says that he will give you rest. Matthew 11:28 28 and 30, Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Your rest is not coming from any alcohol. Your rest is not coming from any weed. Your rest is not coming from the person you're spending time with. No, your rest ain't even coming from your moments of sexual activity. It's not your rest. The word of God, Jesus says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Jesus said, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. The Holy Spirit will give you rest. James 1 and 5 says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. If I have the knowledge and I don't know how to apply the knowledge, the word of God says that he will give you the wisdom to be able to apply the knowledge that you have. And so I pray every day for wisdom, for divine wisdom. He says he gives it to us. James 4 and 7 says, submit yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee you. And so that means when the Holy Spirit is operating through me and reminding me of, of that I need to submit to God, and then he says, resist the devil, resist going back to your old hustling ways. Resist it in the name of Jesus, because submit yourself to God. And he says, the devil will flee from you. Do you know how powerful you are? that the devil can be afraid of you? Hmm. 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 Do you know who you are? Do you know who is with you? Do you know who is in you? He that was part of the let us in creation. He, he, he. Okay, lastly, he says, even if you fall and even if you stumble, he forgives us when we confess our sins. One, 1 John 1 and 9 says, if you do sin, well, it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So on our way to him transforming us, if we stumble in the midst of the transformation, he says, I'll forgive you. Just come to me. Just confess your sins. And I am faithful and I am just and I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's the power of the Holy Spirit within you. If you're struggling with a certain sin this morning, confess the sin. 
The word of God says that he is faithful and he is just and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to live a just life, to give us the power to live because the word of God says the just shall live by faith. And it's the Holy Spirit that gives us the empowerment to live by faith so that our testimony in our lives reflect the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. I want to know, is anybody here today expecting that through whatever you're going through, that nothing is going to steal your testimony of how great and how good God is? Because you have the Holy Spirit. I want somebody shout out. I have the I know the Holy Spirit is with me. I know the Holy Spirit is with me. But I'll close here in my extended minute. I'll close here. The Holy Spirit is given as a gift to the church so that we can fulfill God's purpose for the church and for our individual lives. Church was not meant to be a spectator sport. The Holy Spirit is empowering us that we might do the will of God through the purpose of his church, through the purpose of our living, Jesus spoke for 40 days he, after he got off the cross, after he was resurrected. He stuck around on earth for 40 more days. And those 40 days, it says, he talked about nothing else except the kingdom of God. That's what our conversation is about. That's what our tongue is about the kingdom of God, how we have a king, and his name is Jesus, how we serve our king. Again, I know we all have a lot going on. I know there's spiritual war warfare that we are dealing with, but the empowerment we get from the Holy Spirit is that we can still Serve God. No matter what is going on in our lives, we can still serve God. My personal testimony that is coming up in me right now is probably about a year, two years ago, one of my children got into an accident. And this accident happened on a Sunday morning. Something about Sunday mornings. My late husband died on a Sunday morning. So this day, I get the phone call about 5 a.m. I need you. I've been in an accident. I jump in the car. I go out the driveway. I see my child walking towards me, blood all coming down the side of the face. I'm like, oh my God. The thought that I had in, was in two and a half hours, I'm supposed to be bringing the sermon. How am I going to bring the sermon when my child has all this blood on the side of their face? How I get to the car and the car is just total. I'm saying, I gotta, I gotta preach. Okay, no, must not be preaching this morning. Someone else is gonna bring the message. And I heard God say, no, you're preaching. No, no, no. My child needs to go to the hospital. No, you're preaching. You're assigned to preach this morning. Do you see my son? Yeah, I see your son, but that's my son too. Call your sister. Call my sister. Call your other son. Call Pastor Diaz. 
call them because you're preaching. Think about having to stand up, knowing I'm not with my child, knowing my child is in ER. And I didn't say a word. I heard the Holy Spirit said, no, this is what you're doing. In that moment, I can tell you, it was nothing but the presence of the Holy Spirit that enabled me to preach two sermons that day, that enabled me to smile in front of you all as I know what's going on in my heart, in my head. And so when we say we can't make it, you have to expect that in those moments when you have to make it, that the Holy Spirit is the one that will enable you. You have to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to get you through. You have to believe in the presence of the Holy Spirit that no matter what the hell is around you, that you can still make it, that you can still be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. That no matter what is going on in your home, you can still open up your mouth and say, Jesus is Lord. You can still say, for him I live and for him I die. Because it's the Holy Spirit that comes to enable us. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the power. It's the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So if God has called you to it, he will give you the power to get through it. You just can't fall into the trap of the enemy that he is going to shut up your mouth because you got to be like Jeremiah it was shot, who decided he wasn't going to say anything, but he said it was like fire. Shut up in my bones that I gotta tell you about Jesus. I gotta tell you how awesome he is. I gotta tell you how good he is. I gotta tell you how he brought me over. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. I can't hold it to myself. I can't hold it in. I can't. Cause I know what he can do. I know it. I know it. I know it. He's awesome. Holy Spirit, we're expecting you. <laughs>